Thanks to EA for sponsoring this video. Hey lovelies, it's Kate. Welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. I'm so excited to show you this mansion. It was built on a 64 by 64 lot in Dasa Valley and it's worth over 1 million simoleons. It has any luxury your sims might need and it's inspired by Victorian architecture, both on the exterior and interior and there's so much to explore. At this point I had no idea about the mansion's final design. I knew that I wanted it to be Victorian and a red brick Victorian, but I had no idea about the whole shape, but I knew that I wanted to have a nice walkout basement, so I was able to add a underground pool and everything. So I built a room, I lowered it into the ground, and I then placed a floor piece on top and I'm building the whole mansion on top of that floor piece right now. So later on I can simply go back to the bottom section and I can add the underground pool and anything else. But before we continue, I just wanted to remind you that you can use my creator code Emerald in the EA app and thesims.com. You can use my code at checkout. Simply click on apply promo code and type in code Emerald to support me and my channel. I get a 5% commission and during sales I get a 7% commission. There is currently a Black Friday sale which you don't want to miss. You can here see that you can save a lot on different Sims 4 packs so make sure to check out the sale in the EA app and thesims.com. But back to the build. So the initial idea behind this build was to simply build a mansion which has red brick and beige colored pillars. So this was kind of my main mission. I then researched different architectural styles and I was trying to figure out what I could create which would be like a nice mansion but has red brick. And I found different Victorian mansions so I was trying to lean into this but at the same time as always it's kind of a hybrid. There's a lot going on and it's not like really true to Victorian architecture and I like found out that there are different Victorian styles. When I think of Victorian I'm thinking of these very typical colorful Victorian houses and I'm pretty sure that this was also like your first idea when I talked about Victorian architecture but there are like different types and I yeah I just wanted to build this type of Victorian mansion and I also freestyled a lot so there's a lot happening. I also decided to build a mansard roof and for this I've used a half hipped roof and made it one tile wide and I then placed a platform in the center as you can here see. Usually I would have built a room in the center but this time I decided against this for different reasons. First of all I didn't want to deal with the whole lighting situation. It's really difficult to place windows when a roof is going all around the room and also I wanted the roof to be the height I wanted it to be and when you place a room in the center and you adjust the roof height accordingly you're kind of stuck with this height. You just have to adjust it to the room height and I didn't want this. I also think it's very cute that the roof has a different height than the room right next to it and a platform gives you that freedom and this is why I did it this way and I think it turned out so cute. Also you can like color the platform and the different options have like some type of trim going around it almost and I think it looks very cute and I was really happy eventually that I like chose to use a platform and I really think the fact that the roof is not as tall as the room right next to it but it's still giving the illusion of a room being in the center. This just adds so much to a build. Having all these different heights, levels just makes a build look so complex and unique. This is also why I love to have a good walkout basement, different platforms and I feel like this roof is really standing out because of this. I just wish we could have different wall heights for different parts of a build. I think it will never be possible to have like a different wall height for connected rooms. It just wouldn't make sense. Like when you think of the foundations we have the option to have different heights but they cannot be connected and this totally makes sense to me. So I just wish that we could have different wall heights for different parts of your building. Like just imagine you are working on a village like you have different buildings on one lot and you could have different wall heights. This is also like the most difficult part for me whenever I'm working on some type of village build or a neighborhood, like anything like this. You really have to decide on a wall height and 
a wall height may work for a specific building and usually it's the biggest building like I always try to work on the biggest building first in a village like kind of the eye catcher and then later on I'm adding all these smaller buildings and suddenly the wall height isn't making sense because let's be honest I'm usually not using the lowest wall height so everything is kind of weirdly shaped in a way so this would be like the best update to me I would love this so much and I guess now it's time to talk about the build's shape because you already saw the finished version at the very beginning of the video and you may have noticed that this is basically only half a build. This is not the complete shape and I'm already decorating and doing all these things, adding all these details because in my eyes I was pretty much done. This was the build and I then as you will see thought okay I could add some more stuff in the background so I expanded the build in the back on the left but it still looked so weird and I had no idea why and I like didn't want to continue the build because the shape was so odd and I was kind of so annoyed even though I liked the general direction of the build. I loved the Victorian style, I loved the whole color palette, it looked so fun and so beautiful to me and I really enjoyed building this but it just didn't make sense to me. It looked oddly shaped and I couldn't figure out why and I kind of shelved the build for a couple of days. I went back to it and it it suddenly clicked and I just mirrored the main part and it looked like a like a mansion. It just made sense. And this is so confusing to me because watching this back, watching the process, it just it's just not making sense. And I'm so confused why I didn't think of this, but if I'm being honest, I've been dealing with some builder's block and sometimes when this happens you just have to try different things and when something is not working out you just have to shelf a build and you may want to go back to it. Sometimes I'm like discarding a build but here I still thought okay this could be something so I went back to this and I finished it and I'm happy that I did but after the release of Life and Death, there was like so much excitement, so much momentum. I was allowed to build for the pack. I was really excited to make the announcement. I was excited to show you what I had created. And I was also very happy to create more builds using the pack. So there was so much happening and it was kind of overwhelming. And sometimes when something really big happens like this creatively, it just feels a bit empty afterwards. And I felt like, okay, what could I build now? That's like as exciting and I had no idea what to do really and I was like really struck with builder's block and I feel like this is what happened here like this is probably why I was confused but I still enjoyed the process which is the most important part because I feel like when builder's block is really bad you have no idea what to do and you feel very very tense and I just wanted to talk about this because this is kind of the story of this build this is how it came along this is why the building process is happening the way it does here this is why you can only see half a build and why I'm like completing it later on and I also think, like most of you, of course, are also builders. This is why you are watching. And I feel like Builder's Block is like something that happens to all of us. And I think it's like good to talk about it because it just happens. And let me know in the comments, what do you do when you are hit with Builder's Block? Do you just close the game and you don't look at it for weeks? Or do you like try a different style? How do you deal with this? I think it's very interesting. And for me over the years, it has been like something that happens every now and then. And I feel like that's normal whenever you do something creatively and you do it all the time. Sometimes there's just a point where you have no idea what to do really and it feels so weird like I remember that there was a point where I just wanted to build some type of cute suburban mansion and it felt like I forgot what how a house is shaped it was so absurd but I was so confused I was it really felt like you are like being blocked on the inside it feels so weird and it's not a nice feeling because when you like to be creative you just like to create you just like to do what you love to do and it feels like you are not able to do what you love to do and it's like not a good feeling but yeah this is why the whole build is so weird but I hope that you enjoyed how it turned out and I'm actually so excited for you to finally see the interior because I have to say that I really poured my whole heart into this build. Not saying that I don't do this usually but here I just I feel like I went extra hard like honestly especially on the interior but also the exterior like there are so many details I like really put so much time and love into this and 
I like I love this build I feel like this is a labor of love even though it like came along in a really weird way and even though I felt like Builders Block was hitting me so hard but maybe that's the reason why maybe this was kind of the process of coming out of it eventually but I really enjoyed this I love this style so so much and it also feels like something different like I just didn't want to create like another dreamy mansion and I just wanted to go into a different direction not saying that this isn't dreamy but I guess you know what I mean like my usual style and I also feel like going back to a hyper modern mansion for once like this was kind of what I did all the time here and I stopped doing that because I also explored different styles but I just want to build a modern mansion let me know what you think but I just feel like it's time to do this again and here mirroring the build and I had a hard time doing this. I think the worst thing in the game when you are working on a giant build is when you are pretty much done and then something is not lining up and you have to change everything for it to line up. And I completely confused myself here. Like I was like just mirroring this as you can see here. I was really trying to do the same thing as I did on the other side. I kind of counted the squares to make it the same size but I still confused myself and this process was like really confusing and tedious but I'm really happy how it turned out and mirroring it also like made it gigantic like it's so spacious and you won't believe it but I was furnishing this and I then noticed okay there's no bathroom like on the main floor and I thought oh my gosh this cannot be true because it's like so gigantic and why did I forget about a bathroom like sometimes when I'm working on more compact builds there isn't like a lot of space but here I had all the space in the world but I managed to squeeze in a relatively compact bathroom as you will see and the reason for this was because I like already planned out the whole floor and I just I didn't want to change something because I was so happy with how it turned out and then I just thought okay where could I like put a bathroom without like destroying the whole build. Also the freezers like really they gave me a hard time here like this was really difficult because as you will see I'm going to use some platforms on the inside and this completely disrupted the freezers and I used the big freeze from I think it's Discover University and I feel like the freeze adds a lot to the build because as I said earlier I wanted to have this contrast between the red brick and the beige color and I used different pillars and also the wall decoration from Jungle Adventure for this and then I found the freeze which just made sense and I wasn't happy that like it wouldn't place on some walls and you can use the trick where you just press shift and then you can like delete it in specific areas or place it but it just wouldn't let me on the front no matter what I tried like I could make it work in some areas but in some areas I couldn't and it was so confusing. And yeah, here I finally made the pool bigger and you can here see how I confused myself because initially I made it way too long on the right side and then I adjusted it. And this is going to be like a really fun pool, spa, gym area down there, a small grotto including a hot tub. So this is like really all about luxury and I had so much fun building this and I added so many details to this. I feel like it's very luxurious in a really classy way but it's still so over the top so if you like to play in mansions this build could be for you. There's like so much happening and I then decided to use a round foundation piece to have this area look more exciting because I felt like it was kind of ending so abruptly like I just had these stairs over there and that's it and I thought okay I want to have a nice round shape and I was then like adding a fence and different decorations and hedges as you will see so I just wanted to make the shape more interesting. The one thing that like really concerned me was the fact that it also could be like some type of public building like it could be some I don't know maybe dorms for Discovery University but I decided okay it's fine it's a mansion I will make it work and yeah here I'm finally working on the interior and you already saw the culprit I just placed the platforms which will disrupt the freezers sadly. But I wanted to have an elevated area where I would place the main stairs. I just wanted this to be very complex on the interior as well. I just wanted this to be very exciting. So I wanted to have this area and then stairs on different sides. I also used a round platform. It's a bit dark because I haven't placed any lights yet. But I was really trying to make this work and my idea was because I wanted this to be a typical Victorian interior to have lots of colors, also different colors and you will see that different areas and different rooms have different colors so I was really trying to lean into this. 
and this is like very colorful at the same time it's quite dark and rustic because it's a victorian build but there's like so much color going on and i'm really happy about this and this was already so hard to me because you know that I like really like to work on neutral colored builds and here I thought okay what am I going to do am I going to like have this green and red combination or some other colors and I was changing this so much as you will see but I eventually like settled on a color and from this point on furnishing was really easy and fun I also changed the windows and because the windows are green I decided to also go with a like wallpaper like this and I think it turned out very cute I love the green and I've also used lots of other colors even yellow and blue and some pastel pink as you will see so this will be so much fun and I had no idea how to furnish this initially I'm going to place a piano there so you will also see in the screenshots but I had no idea at first I wanted to have a sofa over there but this would make sense because it just wasn't lining up and another reason was the fact that there are already so many living rooms, so many seating areas. Your Sims can really sit down and entertain guests in a lot of areas in this house because it's a mansion. And I just thought, okay, this is supposed to be like the stairwell basically and I didn't want this to turn into another living room situation. So I will like place a piano over there. I just had to fill the space somehow which is always extra challenging and exciting when it comes to mansions and I also used some spandrels which gave me a hard time and the reason for this is the platform not only disrupted the freezes but also the spandrels because even though I didn't have any freezes on the inside I deleted them the game was still kind of detecting the freezes and it would like not allow me to increase the height of the pillars and then some of the spandrels were too low it was a nightmare if i'm being honest but i like really tried to make it work and this build as you will see has some extra exciting features there is a seance room so you can have a seance and like have some paranormal fun and I decided to use some of the doors which look like bookshelves I think they might be from the base game so it's like a hidden room there's also a ballroom so it's like really luxurious and big you can have a whole event there there's a dance floor then there's a home gym but I just wanted to have something that's like different from a usual mansion so I wanted to have the seance room and also the ballroom so it's like really really out of the ordinary and really over the top and also when it comes to Victorian birds and Victorian times seance rooms and everything that's a part of this was like really popular there was a big obsession with anything to do with death and ghosts and everything the afterlife and I feel like this also makes a lot of sense now after life and death came out and I've used a lot of furniture and objects from life and death here and I feel like it kind of ties everything together in a really fun way and I just had so much fun building and furnishing this and I hope it shows I was really trying to add so many details and I added even more afterwards like you will see this in the screenshot I was like going back into some of the rooms and like placed a, a like a bit of clutter and decorations and I really wanted this to be so luxurious and so detailed and the wallpaper here is so fun so this room has the color blue obviously in a really toned down way and I was trying to have like different colors for different areas and everything except this area I feel like this is like kind of all very warm and it just I don't know the wood is kind of the star of the show here and the rock has a similar color so I feel like the center part with the dining room doesn't really have a color but this living room here will have a color as you will see it's like pastel blue and pastel pink which is like so fun but here initially as you can see I had chosen this wallpaper which has a greenish blue color but I then like made some changes to this and I was like trying to pick different colors but I still wanted the colors to make sense not only for like the different areas but also like for the whole build in total when you look at it when you zoom out and this was like really tricky and I don't know if I really did this type of style justice but I did my best and I feel like it's such a fun build in a really like rustic style and it wouldn't be a Kate Emerald build without a obnoxiously gigantic kitchen and I've once again outdone myself here look at this it's like really gigantic and 
the room is like so big that I eventually ended up separating it and this is where the ballroom will be so I can really like prepare some food there and you can step over and have a party so it's all connected like the dining area the ballroom which is like really good when it comes to playing in a build I guess so the important areas are kind of connected so the sims don't have to walk too far but I'm gonna be honest this is a gigantic build so your sims will have to walk far and I know that this is like not the most practical build for gameplay and I know that some players enjoy these gigantic mansions others don't and like sometimes having a small build is like way easier when it just comes to really playing because you don't know where your sims are and I get this but I just have so much fun building these gigantic mansions and I think everyone's different some people like to play in these houses and yeah, this was like a little bar area. I just really had to to fill all the spaces in a like logical way so it would make sense. And I was just trying to add a bar over there. And because I wanted this to be once again very colorful, I decided to use this watch from the Life and Death kitchen. And I have to say, I'm like really obsessed with this pack, but the kitchen like in general is such a staple. Also in the white swatch, when I'm thinking of like my typical mansions, for example, I think the white swatch would be so amazing for this. You could like really create some really typical Hollywood mansions with the white swatch. And you can also use it to create something like this. It's such a beautiful, versatile kitchen. And here we have the Saints room. So this is really dark and I'm going to place a curtain in the center to like fence the Saints table off kind of and yeah you will see how I'm going to use the bookshelf and this one was a really difficult room to furnish because I had never created this I think or maybe I'm, I'm not remembering because after the paranormal pack came out I probably created something with it but I just forgot I don't know there's so many builds I've created sometimes I don't remember what I've done but I just wanted this to be like really spooky and gloomy so this is very dark so while the whole build is really colorful in a way this room is like really dark and gloomy but I still decided to have like an accent color and I simply decided to have red for this and yeah I placed three of the bookshelf doors in the center and then I placed the life and death bookshelves left and right to like have it frame it and I then placed some cabinets from the life and death kitchen above to have like a whole wall which is kind of hiding the fake bookshelves in the center so it looks a bit more realistic because when you just place this one random bookshelf door it's like really giving away that it's a door and yeah here you can see like the bathroom that I mentioned earlier I simply decided to have this long hallway which is leading into the mansion I just made it shorter and I just placed the bathroom in the back but there will be more bathrooms right next to the bedroom so it will make sense I have to say but this was like really hard to squeeze in and for the best room I decided to go with red because I wanted this to be colorful and it's such a fun color and for the other bathrooms I'm going to like have different colors depending on the color I chose for a bedroom so if I like had a yellow bedroom I tried to have like a pastel yellow bathroom you can here see how I had already laid out the floor plan and the colors and here I'm just finishing a bit so this is like the yellow bedroom for example and they are like different colors for each bedroom you will see in the screenshots like all the different bedrooms and everything the floor plan it was hard to include everything this video is already so long and this is such a big mansion both the exterior and interior were so detailed and it took a long time and I just tried to like include the most exciting stuff in the video I hope you like this and I just had like a mix of regular bedrooms and kids rooms just different variations different colors so you can really have a big big sim family here in this mansion and this bedroom for example has a blue color scheme and I've used the same wallpaper which I had used in the living room and I'm so obsessed with this and I feel like as someone who like kind of started out building modded mansions like this is how I mostly started with YouTube and building and stuff and 
as someone who like usually build in a really modern style, this is like so much fun, like exploring all these different textures and wallpapers. It's like so amazing. And I feel like we have the vampires pack, we have life and death, the permanent normal pack, the spooky stuff pack. We have like all these different packs. Also the decor to the max pack. There are like so many objects, wallpapers, which are so suitable for a style like this. If you really want to have these fun textures and colors, you can really have a nice combination of all these different packs. And this is like so fun to me and so fun to explore. This is another bedroom, probably the main bedroom because it's really big and I've used this amazing fireplace, which I love so, so much. It's one of the most amazing items in the new pack and I just had to include it. And the floor plan when it comes to this room was a bit confusing. It was actually relatively easy to like create the floor plan for this build because I feel like this is one of the best builds of mine when it comes to a build making sense because sometimes we have to be honest here some of my builds are like really over the top and the floor plan is not always making sense and it's more like a really fun exterior and I'm then trying to make sense of the floor plan if that makes sense but here the build was so symmetrical and everything was lined up so neatly all the windows it just made a lot of sense like when it came to the interior maybe not so much for the main level but like in general i feel like this build just makes sense it's a really cohesive build and it's also over the top like this area here for example we don't have to talk about it this might not make a lot of sense because it's like really over the top but like in general and this video is very slowly coming to an end. I'm going to add so many screenshots so you can really see what I've created here. So you can see all the furnished rooms. You can see the floor plan. This build is available in the gallery. My ID is Kate Emerald. My builds are CC free and unmodded. So you can just go and grab this from the gallery if you want to. And before this video ends, I want to once again remind you that you can use code Emerald at checkout in the EA app and thesims.com to support me and my channel. You can apply the code and I get a 5% commission and during sales I get a 7% commission and right now there is a Black Friday sale going on. So don't forget to check out all the amazing packs and in case you want to use my code, thank you so much for your support. It means the world to me. And this is it. You can here see all the screenshots. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed this build. In any case, you should use it. I hope your sims will enjoy living in it. I hope you are doing so, so well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you in the next video. Bye bye.